The reading this morning is from Luke 1, verse 57 to 66. Luke 1, starting at verse 57. The birth of John the Baptist. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened, and his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak, praising God. The neighbours were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Lee is going to uh, do the sermon this morning. Let's just pray for him. Father, we do uh, thank you for your word and we pray, Lord, that you will speak through it powerfully to us today. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Lee, Lord, that you'll help him to hear your promptings, that if you want to change anything that he's prepared, Lord, that you will speak to him uh, in this moment, Lord, that it may be your word for us today. We pray that you'll give us your peace, Lord, and you'll especially give Lee your peace in this moment that he may proclaim your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. That was really good. That was really good. I normally have to get people to do it twice, so that, that was brilliant. Thank you. Can I say, first of all, it was an absolute privilege having and being here for the, for the christening this morning. And actually standing up here, you all look amazing. It's just like a sea of colour and smartness. It's just like, so give yourself a pat on the back because everybody looks absolutely fantastic. And that. You can tell the people patting themselves because they're the ones that normally look scruffy. Most of you didn't because you obviously always look smart most of the time. So, so well done. Um, I'm going to apologise beforehand. I do use humour um, in sermons and I have been known to upset the occasional person, usually my wife. Um, so nothing, don't take anything I say on a personal level, but do take it on a spiritual level if, 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 if God's speaking to you. Now, when I, when I first got this passage, I had a look at it, and, and I read it, and I thought, crumbs, how do you preach on that? Um, and I kind of got a little bit nervous about it, actually, and I thought, I'm sure Glyn does this in pur- on purpose. He kind of gives me the ones that maybe there's not that much in there, but then actually, knowing Glyn, that's not true, because Glyn seems to glean something out of every passage in the Bible. So I read it uh, a few times, and I really began to feel God saying something to me for it. But to fully understand it, we need to go back a little bit. We need to kind of, if you like, look at the, the prequel. How many of you, and I warn you, there will be a little bit of audience uh, sort of congregation participation this morning. How many of you have seen a prequel to a film? Put your hand up if you've seen a prequel. Okay, well, not, not that many of you. I'm going to tell you a little story the other night. I'm not going to say who I was watching the film with, but it was in my home. Okay, and we were watching a film, and it was called Prometheus. It's, uh, it's quite a good film. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Lots of action, good story, great characters, a little bit of, ooh, that made me sort of scared. And at the end of it, the person I was watching it with, who lives in the house with me and isn't one of my children, okay, (laughs) she turned around and said to me, she said, I don't get it. I said, well, what don't you get? She said, the story, it doesn't doesn't make sense. I said, you do know it's a prequel to Alien, don't you? She went, it makes sense now, okay. (laughs) And, and actually, it's an easy mistake to make if you've seen the film, because if you don't understand it's a prequel, and I only knew that because I'd read the back of the DVD and I'd been told, um, but once we realised that that was the prequel, it kind of all slotted into place and, and made sense. But often, when we read in the Bible, we need to do that, because God can speak to you through any part of Scripture, 
But if you really want to get into it, you need to have a little look at what's gone on before to fully understand it. So we're going to do a little bit um, about that this morning. And over the coming uh, uh, weeks, you're going to hear a lot from the front about getting into God's Word. Glyn is always uh, encouraging us to read Scripture for ourselves, to get into the Bible, uh, to try and get more knowledge of it. And um, sometimes that's easier said than done. And if you ever need any thoughts or help with that, come and speak to Glyn, speak to, to Dean, one of our church wardens, speak to myself. Let's get into the passage then. Let's look at the little bit of the prequel. Zechariah and Elizabeth didn't have any children. Okay? Now, there are the odd, uh, the odd time in my house where I kind of think, oh, that must have been so peaceful. Okay? Because children bring with them, don't they, all sorts of demands. I mean, Michael, I'm sure this... this how many sleepless nights have you had already? I, do you know, it's so, it's so hard on dads. People underestimate the role of a dad in, in a birth. <laughs> you spend nine months doing everything you can to get ready for it, and that, I'm joking, I know you had an awful lot. And I know, how, I, know how, I know how you went through that pregnancy. Annie gave us an up-to-date thing almost weekly on, on how you were doing. But children bring with them a, a, lot of, a lot of joy, but also a lot of hard work. But they didn't have any children. But what was worse for them at the time was, in their culture, not having children was actually seen as something very negative. They would have been looked down on because they weren't able to have children. And yet they faithfully continued to serve God and then one day Zechariah is uh, on duty he's a priest in the temple and uh, it was his turn to go into the inner sanctuary and, and, and light and burn the incense now we're really really blessed these days because we have direct access to God through what Jesus did on the cross years and years ago in Bible times people had to go through a series of rituals, a series of different things to have access to God, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have direct access. But they didn't have that then. And Zechariah went into the temple, he went behind the curtain into the inner sanctuary, and he was burning the incense. Then one day, while, while this was happening, he saw an angel. Now, I don't know if you, any of you have ever had an experience of an angel, Okay, but this angel uh, spoke to Zechariah and he said to him, basically, you're going to have a son. Now, if an angel spoke directly to me, my first thought probably wouldn't be to question them because angels are normally quite mighty, powerful beings and I probably would like to think that I'd have just accepted. But Zechariah basically wanted proof and boy, did he get some proof because his proof was basically, you're going to be mute until the baby's born. Now, I'm sure Elizabeth was thinking, oh, fantastic. He can't talk for like nine months. You know, he can't say no. He can't say I won't do that. He can't say later because, you know, he can't communicate with me. Okay, but he was mute for nine months. Now, he came out and everybody was assuming he'd had some kind of vision because he could not speak. Now, cut that part of the story short. Zechariah did question the, able, and he was, the angel, and he was told that he wouldn't be able to speak. But he came out and he communicated to them that Elizabeth was going to have a baby. Now, I want you literally now this morning, turn to the person next to you. Now, no, this isn't just, this is actually I want you to do this. Turn to the person next to you and try and use gestures to explain, blokes, this is going to be a bit weird for you, okay? Okay, explain that you're going to have a baby. Okay, so literally the person next to you, using hand gestures, try and explain to them that you're going to have a baby. Okay? Now, do you know one of, one of the many benefits of being up here watching you do that was some of you really, really come... I mean, some of you, I just got what you were doing completely. Some of you, I'm thinking, that's going to be one weird baby. Okay? Um, I'm going to pick on Michael a little bit this morning because yours was brilliant. You know, he did the whole kind of thing. Now, I don't know whether that was joyful tears. Joyful t I'm sure it's joyful tears, okay. But that's how he came out, because he could not speak. Now, if we fast forward to today's passage, I love the opening line. Just listen. When it was time, when it was time for the baby, to, it gives the impression that the baby just, it was time for the baby to be born. The baby just popped into the world and it was simple and painless and quiet and, and how, women, how many of you have experienced when it was time as a, a being a joyful and, I mean it's joyful after you see the baby 
But that going through and leading up to, I've heard, can be quite painful. <laughs> yeah? Now, I was present at all, at all of my children's births, and it is a testimony to how strong women are when you see what they go through. And I am not one that would undermine that, because my wife's pain threshold is up here, whereas mine's like in a basement somewhere. Okay? Because it's not something easy. But when we read the Bible, we think it, it just kind of, I don't know, I think it kind of makes that bit sound too simple, because it would have been quite, quite an ordeal. And Elizabeth's and, and Zechariah's, their neighbours, they rejoiced with them when they heard what the Lord had done. Now, they obviously would have known, wouldn't they, that they were expecting. Although, in Bible times, if somebody's pregnant uh, these days, what's the, what's, what do they do? Where, where do they announce it? Traditionally these days, where do people announce that they're, oh, we're expecting a baby? Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we, it's true. I've lost count of how many times you go on Facebook and somebody's announced to the world that they're, they're having, um, having a baby. And it's brilliant because your friends get to know instantly. You know, you don't, you know you don't, not this, well, they didn't tell me. I'm not much of a friend, am I? They didn't let me know. Because we know very quickly. But in Bible times, actually, women would have actually hidden themselves away a little bit. So actually, for people to have known that they were expected meant they would have had to go out and told them. But they wouldn't have just been telling them, oh, well, by the way, we're, we're having a baby, because they were quite an old couple, yeah? I'm not going to ask people to raise their hands, but some of us know that we're, we're getting a little bit older. I, uh, I've just had another birthday, and just to prove that I'm definitely getting older, all day, I thought I was 44, <laughs> until uh, we sat down in the evening, and, uh, and what my lovely wife made me my favourite dinner. Anyone want to guess what that is? My favourite dinner. It's really simple. Bangers and mash. Okay, my favourite. It tops everything else except I'm looking for. Where's Betty? I'm looking forward to Betty's rice later with a hot sauce. Um, that's that's probably not far off it actually. Okay, but um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Completely. What was I saying? Oh yeah, that's right. See, just proving my point. And then I sat down in the evening and my, and my children said, so Dad, how does it feel to be 45? I said, I'm 44. They went, no, Dad, you're not. So I went, oh, flip me, I'm 45. <laughs> I think it, that was like a sign to me of age because when you forget how old you are, it's like that first step, isn't it? How many of you don't even think about how old? No, don't you need to ask that. Okay. But that happens. Okay, right. When the baby was eight days old, okay, when the baby was eight days old, he was taken to the temple and, I don't even like saying the word, okay, he, uh, he was circumcised. Okay, and that was part of the, the tradition, that was something that, uh, that, that happened, okay. But everyone wanted to name him John after his, his father. And when Elizabeth said his name would be John, uh, sorry, Zachariah. Okay, they said that the, the baby's name was going to be Zechariah, but then they looked at that, at that didn't they? Look, they looked at Elizabeth and said, at uh, John, said, what's his name going to be? Looked at Zechariah, okay, and said, you know, what's his name going to be? And do you know what? I don't know about guys, I don't know what your experience is, but if my wife says something, nobody else questions it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look at me and go, well, what do you think, Lee? Yeah, they just take for granted what my wife has said, okay? But obviously, these days, it was slightly different, okay? And, and, but immediately, what did Zechariah say? He got a motion for a, for a tablet. Now, did you know they had tablets in the Bible? Yeah? How many of you knew they had tablets in the Bible? Yeah? How many of you have got a tablet? How, hands up if you've got a tablet. Okay, we're just going to do a quick... Who's posh and has the iPad? Hands up if you've got the iPad. Don't be ashamed. Put your hands up. It's all good. Okay. Put your hands up if, you, uh, if you've got a Samsung. Okay. Put your hands up if you've got a Lenovo. One. Okay. Two. Two. Put your hands up if you're like me. You've got a proper one. You've got a Kindle Fire. <laughs> okay. It's cheap, but it does the job. Okay. But immediately when, when, that, when Zechariah wrote that down on the tablet, immediately he could speak. Immediately he could communicate again. And that must have been absolutely amazing because the angel told him he wasn't going to be able to speak until the baby was born. And the baby was born and, you know, maybe he was thinking, well, as soon as it's born, I'll be able to speak again. But still he couldn't. He had to wait a few more days until he could fully, fully speak. 
And we know, don't we, that, that this baby was going to be something special. This baby was a forerunner preparing the way for Jesus Christ. Now, all babies are special, okay? My children are all uh, grown up now, but I've got a little uh, baby uh, niece, and my wife and I, we, we're foster carers, and we, some, very often we, we look after babies, and all babies are special. And little, your little one is just in that suit this morning with the little trainers and, and everything else. He just looked even more adorable than he, than he normally looks. And I know from uh, having been, been to your house that everybody just dotes, don't they, on this little one. And rightly so, because he's a special baby. But actually, John came to prepare us for Jesus. But what was so special that Jesus needed preparing for. Now, hopefully many of us this morning will already know who Jesus is. But do you know what? If you don't know Jesus, time is kind of running out. Because I can't say we're living in end times, because I'm not, you know, no, none of us know. But I do know that the more I look around the world, the more difficulties there seem to be. And one day, God's going to send Jesus Christ back. But do you know what the good news is? We can all be ready for that day. Now there's a great little verse in scripture that says, you know, if we knew that a thief was going to break into our house at night, we'd be ready for it. Now if, if I knew that a thief was going to break into my house, I'd have a word with, uh, with OK, and I'd say, look, this guy's coming around my house, he's going to break in, and uh, can you come round and uh, just be on guard on the doorway and, uh, and you can have my no, no, my dog would just lick them to death, okay? But if people would want to be prepared, wouldn't they? Now, Jesus died on the cross, yeah, so that we can be forgiven of all the wrongdoing that we do, okay? Without looking at everybody else, put your hand up if you've ever done anything wrong. Yeah? For those of you who haven't put your hand up, you've just done your wrong thing, you've lied, okay? Because we all do things wrong, it's in our human nature. Yeah, we, we can't help our things but to do things wrong. It, we just do it. You know, there's a bit, great bit in the Bible where Paul uh, talks about, you know, sometimes I, I don't do the things I don't want to do, and I do do the things, you know, and it, we end up doing things we don't want to do, don't we? Yeah? If you can go a day without doing anything wrong, please get in contact with me because I want to know how you did it. Because I can't. But because of what Jesus did on that cross... We can be forgiven for all of those things because then when God looks at us on judgment day, when Jesus comes back and we stand before almighty God, God will not look at you and just list all the wrong things you've done. He'll look at Jesus who took your place and you're forgiven because of that. So my challenge to all of us this morning is be ready for that day when Jesus comes back because none of us need to fear that day when we know Jesus we can actually look forward to it with excitement and with expectancy. Thank you very much for listening.